I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim. My dad, Ty. My sister, Maddie. And our salty dog, Stella. We started our adventure refitting a Lagoon 450 before taking on the massive project of resurrecting a sunken 2021 Leopard 50. It's been one heck of a ride, but we're on this adventure to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. Ha. We got our shipment of the replacement stuff um, for the mast. And I don't know if we covered this or not. So if we did, bear with me, I'm gonna cover it one more time. So all of the shrouds were actually correct, except for the eyes, which is this right here at the bottom of the mast. That typically, not typically, that goes into a toggle that's threaded. And then another one of these goes into the bottom of the turnbuckle and goes to the chain plate on the boat. Um, so what happened was, is that we were missing pins. So I called them like, hey, we're missing pins, three, three pins for our, our eyes. Well, they sent 20 millimeter toggles but they put a 22 millimeter hole in the end. So they were trying to put things together and get things shipped to us. Things were on back order. It was gonna be what? An undetermined period of time from the drop ship from the manufacturer to actually get this stuff. And then they come through in clutch yesterday afternoon. They uh, tell me that, um, or day before, I apologize, that they found one inch and they're gonna upsize it and send it to us. And they did but I've got to show you this. This is insane. I would call it comical. So the 50 is a, it's a decent sized boat, right Kim? It's a, yeah. it's a big boat. And so this monster turnbuckle, it's like as big as my forearm, is what tensions the cap shrouds to hold the mast up. It's big, but when you have a 22 millimeter, you have to go up <laughs> to a bigger one. That thing is insane. It's got to weigh, I don't know, it's got to weigh 10 pounds, eight pounds of solid bronze. So anyhow, you got the right stuff, but now everything is upsized on the mast. They upsize the shrouds um, or the, the hardware on the baby stays. They upsize the hardware on the big stuff. So this isn't going anywhere. And really? That is such a dad line. That's dad not line. going anywhere. So the only thing I need to do now is make sure that they sent us left and right handed because as the turnbuckle works, as you turn it one direction, it either tightens or loosens both at the same time. So you have to have reverse threads on one side and you have to know what you're doing. Wait for it. Did I get it? Ah. So the shipping weight on these six pieces was 33 pounds. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, we now officially have everything we need to put the mast up. So let's finish the wiring and then call the crane guy and say, get out here and put our mast on. Yeah, that'll be what you say. Please. <laughs> Okay, here I am using uh, non-OSHA approved methods to unsafely shape starboard pieces to create some backer plates for our cameras that are going in. Explain to me what you are doing now that you have your fancy pucks cut. All right, so this extrusion here from the bottom of the leading edge, kind of looks like, a, like an airplane wing, to here is about three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters. I want to mount the camera level with the bottom of this spreader relatively and if I mount it it's gonna be at an angle like this and I think that's just kind of booty so if I can get away with not doing that I'd like to not do that what's this camera for this camera is so that I can see the port side of the boat because from the helm you can't see the port side of the boat when you're docking and to be frank it's a little spooky 
here's another great example of where this is going to help out. A couple weeks ago when we were on our way to the haul out slip for this exact project, well, Sid found terra firma. She thought she was a little closer on that port side than she was, and if she had a camera, she'd have known. But since she didn't, well, she was too far away, and uh, that mud is no extra charge. So I'm trying to come up with a solution that's going to allow me to mount the camera and see, mount the camera attractively so that it can do what I want it to do. Now, if I don't get this carved like I want, I'm just going to mount the camera at an angle and then I can adjust it because it's an eyeball and maybe that's the safest and most intelligent thing to do. Um, but I was trying to see how much drop there was and unfortunately it's a full three quarter thickness, which means this puck I basically would have to take out from here. Ah. I'd have to take out all of this material on mm. the side. That doesn't seem very safe. No, not really. Um, the nice part is that when I take that out, however, it will uh, it sit flushish. So <clears throat> I'm gonna carve away at that and see how well I do, and um, I'll, I'll give you an update here in a minute. How are you gonna whittle that starboard? With my fancy new tool. Another Milwaukee tool, not sponsored, but should be. Um, my little die grinder that we use to uh, do the thing with the deal to clean up the props. So we're gonna use that because I've got some 40 grit and I think I can hack through this, mm. carve through it. That's the idea at least. We'll see how successful I become. Might be easier to see on this side. Profile's the same. So it, it look, what's funny is, is it looks like it stops and there's a shelf, but if you look down the face of this, it's flush. There you go. And then the camera will sit on top of that. Well, looks like you did it after all. Now that I've gotten down to the final shape on the puck, what I'm doing here is just drilling through the pre-drilled holes that I matched up from the camera base and using the tip of the drill bit just to mark and ever so slightly score the surface of the spreader. After that, I'll go back, drill the holes, tap it, and then I can put the screws in. Oh shit. What? It's perfect. <gasps> Shoot. <laughs> All right, let me get my tap. We don't need to see you do that again. No, you don't need to see me do that again. Okay. All right, guys, today is really exciting because this is the last push to get everything ready for the mass so that we can stand it tomorrow morning. I think we actually have everything now. Um, so what we're gonna wrap up, it seems always that half the work is in the last 5% of the job. And um, so this is what we're doing. I'm installing the VHF antenna at the top of the mast. That is going next to our cool lightning prevention system. But this guy can't be, it needs to be the highest metal thing on the boat. So this is gonna get a coat of uh, heat shrink on the outside of it to isolate it. It will not affect the VHF transmission. Next, we're gonna move down the mast and I'm going to install this big brother monster infrared 400 foot night, day, turns, turn around, FLIR, knockoff, copy. I'll let you know how that goes. This is on Amazon purchase. I'm still not cheap, but not $20,000, so we're gonna do that. Then I'm gonna tighten the inner diamonds that isolate or um, keep the mast straight down in the middle. We've put the pre-bend in the mast, and now I just wanna snug up those inner diamonds to make sure that we isolate the tension down the center of the mast, and we'll have the guys come and do a tune and inspection on it later. Then I'm moving down to the bottom of the mast, and at the bottom of the mast, we are, um, I need to drill a hole in the side of the mast because there's supposed to be an exit point for all of the wires and data cables and all of that to happen. 
Um, is that it? No, no, I actually have to install these cameras, which means I need to put some ethernet jacks on the uh, Cat6 data cable. And then of course, wire in all of the lights at the spreader, so. We also have to <sighs> install the big shrouds, the baby shrouds, oh, assemble the furler, assemble the furling tubes, yes. and install all of that. So, finish the rigging, which <laughs> shouldn't be too bad. But yeah, we're gonna take those big monster, we decided we're gonna take the turnbuckles and actually mount them on the boat and just leave the pad eyes at, at the bottom so that when we stand the mast, we'll be able to put the clevis pins in and then lean the mast back and just throw the clevis pins and not trying to pick up the mast with the cabling and these monster 30 pound turnbuckles swinging around. So um, it's gonna be a big full day. So we'll try to film as much of this as possible, but um, I think this is really about only five or 10% of what it took to get this mass put together. So hopefully we'll finish it today. So let's get on it. All right, we're gonna do a little trial fit before we rivet this guy on to make sure that I get this as close to the top of the mast, but it doesn't interfere with being able to take it on and off. So I'd like to get it right up about here. The question is, if I do that, will it clear if I take it out? Yep, so that'll work. So to center this, I kind of cheat. All right, so I drill the first hole and that allows me to hold it here while I mark these next two. And to cheat, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna drill one hole, then when I'm drilling, done drilling one hole, I'm gonna put both of these rivets in. Then once these two rivets are in, then I can mark and drill the third hole while it's in place and put the rivet in so I don't, you know, you metal on metal and you're trying to hold stuff and mark and stuff can slip around. I don't, I really don't want that to drill a hole offset and then the rivet not fit. to put like any Loctite or anything like that on there or do you just screw that down and tighten it up? It says just tighten it up. Mm. VHF. It's installed, it's just not wired up. <laughs> so, half which, the battle. Which brings us to the next thing. We're gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to solder a proper connection on the end of this. Because this is out in the elements, you do not want a just generic twist on, shove on uh, connector for your VHF. It really needs to have a solid, soldered, complete connection so that you're gonna get the best transmission possible. If you guys can, I highly recommend, you can actually get them on Amazon. I'll try to link something below. You can buy these pre-cut in a certain length. Uh, we ran into a couple issues. One, I didn't know exactly how much length that I was really going to need inside the boat. So it's hard for me to order that. Two, it wasn't available within the time we needed to do the mass project. And three, the conduit that all of these wires ran through, which is this VHF, our air transducer, the lights, the light for the Windex, the lightning prevention system, all of that ran through one individual conduit and I did not have room for any fittings on the ends of any of those wires. So um, I'll show you how to do this. It's not very hard, it's pretty straightforward, but if you can buy one pre-done, that's the best way to go. <laughs> I like how you laugh at me because I'm wearing my old man glasses. I laugh at you because I'm not usually on camera wearing them, but I oh, yeah? wear them too. I think 350 should be good on this. Okay guys, I have to um, concentrate on what I'm doing here. Okay. So, this is our VHF cable. It is a big monster 213. 
and it takes a special fitting. I ordered the wrong fitting, but Sydney saved the day and went and got me a new one. Um, I'm gonna show you how to solder these on because for a really good connection, I think that a solder connection is the best way to go and it really is super easy. So I've cut a little section of this sheathing off out here and underneath the sheathing is the, the, the negative conductor or the, or the ground shielding that's on the outside. Then there's a big plastic or polymer compound, whatever it is on the inside. And then here's the positive conductor that actually transmits the signal. So we're gonna solder this in two places. One, we're going to fill these holes with solder, which is gonna solder the ground to, the, to this um, insulated casing out here. And then the wires in the middle are gonna stick through the end here. And we're gonna fill this, this tube with solder as well, and then thread it all together. It's nice and hot. So just cut the jacket off without cutting through the wires underneath is the important part. And what we want is to be solid just like that. Can you see that all right? Let me hold it up again. It's as close as I can get. So. All right, so I've got it completely soldered. I don't know if you can see that or not. Shiny all the way around. And now I need to separate this piece from the end here. So I'm just gonna take my knife and I just wanna cut most of the way through this plastic shielding just to create a seam. Kinda like scoring it, I guess? Yeah, cause I don't wanna pull off. I don't wanna cut into the the core on the inside. All right. So now that's pretty much where we're at here. I'm going to take my rag and I'm going to take a little bit of flux and put on this, clean all this up. Okay. And then I'm just going to thread this in. So what I'm doing is, is I'm there's threads on the inside there. And that is gonna thread down on the outside of the conductor. Okay, heat shrink. Barrel connector. And then this threads down on the inside. And we wanna make sure that none of these wires from the outside come across or touch the inside at all. Thread this in. Threads down over top of the plastic until it bottoms out. Here are my light. Thank you, love. Okay. All right, so now we're in here and you can see the solder connections on the inside. So now what I need to do is I need to solder inside this hole in here. I'm just gonna take this shoe, stick it down on the inside to transfer that heat in. Look at the flux. And I wanna completely fill this entire space. All right, now we need to check the meter and make sure that we don't have continuity between the two. So. Like, you want this? Yep. Bolts me to look at Kim multitasking. I'm holding a camera. She's amazing. <laughs> Filming, coughing. coughing. Hero support. Okay. When you go to our home setting, light said, drop falling down on the job. I don't know, you still needed the light. Okay, we're gonna go to ohm. Let's test continuity. So if something touches the two of these it makes a sound okay so we're going to touch here and here and we're hoping for no sound no sound no sound that means that the center conductor or positive is isolated from the outside all right Which is what you want yep and so now we're going to take this 
and this threads over top like so. And then I'm gonna put some heat shrink on this. I would prefer it be black, but all I have is red, sadly. And this basically just waterproofs that end because it's glue lined heat shrink. And we have a waterproof connection at the end. So now I'm gonna coil this up, zip tie the excess to this loop. And I think other than doing our little zip tie mounts that pretty much wraps up the top of the mast. Sweet. Okay, today is mast standing day, but we still have a few things to do before we can put this mast up. And a big one is going to be assembling the furler and the furler tubes and getting everything attached to the mast so that, of course, it can be secured properly to the boat. Yesterday. 